Park Avenue Synagogue has an amazing history. You can't help but feel that history. You're part of something greater. It's rooted in tradition. This is something that's been around for generations. When you join Park Avenue Synagogue, you're joining a story that is much bigger than you. In 1882, a group of German Jews in Manhattan's Yorkville neighborhood joined together to create a reform synagogue that would become known as the Park Avenue Synagogue. Nicknamed the Little Temple by some of its congregants, the synagogue had a choir and an organ. Formal services were conducted in German and the prayers in Hebrew. Though its initial location is unclear, within a year, the synagogue had moved to East 86th Street. Park Avenue Synagogue is actually an amalgamation of five different synagogues that joined over the years. We say we were founded in 1882. The truth is, like most Jews on the Upper East Side, we're a lot older than we want to admit. The entire Carnegie Hill area was a Germanic Alsatian population at the time, a lot of beer breweries in this area, things of that sort. In the Roaring Twenties, the synagogue, with a strong clergy and a vital lay leadership, built a beautiful new Moorish-style temple on East 87th Street off Madison Avenue. Despite the new address, the name Park Avenue Synagogue would remain. But the Depression would sorely test the synagogue and America. During the Depression, they didn't pay the rabbi for quite a number of years. There was a president at the time by the name of Jacob Friedman who really, through his vision, kept the place together. A dynamic new leader was soon brought in to head the congregation. And because Milton Steinberg was not a reform rabbi, Park Avenue Synagogue would henceforth be conservative. Balancing that line of tradition and change, which is really the hallmark of conservative Judaism, Park Avenue Synagogue served this community and served American Jewry in critical moments. Rabbi Steinberg of Blessed Memory spoke on behalf of the Jewish community both as the clouds of Nazism were rising over Europe as well as the establishment of the Jewish state in 1948. Following the untimely early death of Rabbi Steinberg, the synagogue would be led by Rabbi Judah Nadich, who presided over a period of tremendous growth and further social transformation. Rabbi Nadich was Eisenhower's rabbi who was there at the liberation of the camps. Rabbi Nadich tipped the synagogue into more activism. We have found perhaps a new leader, Reverend Luther King. I may not get there with you. Tonight he lies dead as a result of that violence which he hated. His influence will be great in death, even as it was in life. Rabbi Nadich's stewardship through a period of social tumult was followed by two decades of calm and steady leadership from the British-born rabbi, David Lincoln, who would guide the congregation through the difficult days after another national tragedy. After 9-11, we had a interfaith memorial service. There was not a single seat available. One of the most moving, incredible events I've ever seen in my life. Upon Rabbi Lincoln's retirement, a young new rabbi was brought in from Chicago's Anche Emmett Synagogue, Rabbi Dr. Elliot J. Cosgrove. We have a world-renowned rabbi who just has an unstoppable vision. He not only inspires us as a community, he's really at the forefront of Judaism in North America. Rabbi Cosgrove personally has so much to do with the renaissance that we are experiencing here. We're serving our membership through their lives, life cycles, happy and sad events. In that sense, we're a very traditional synagogue. Performing a mitzvah is a proud transformation of the universal self into a Jewish self. And we are also shaping conversations for American Jewry. A synagogue should be about making the old new and the new sacred which is a turn of a phrase attributed to Rav Cook. 
what we're trying to do is pass our tradition down from one generation to another, Lador Vador. And in order to be able to do that, we have to take our tradition seriously, but we also have to make it exciting and new so that the younger people want to grab onto it and run with it. Music has been the heart of this congregation for over a hundred years. You name the composer, they've been here. They wrote music for the synagogue. As illustrious as the rabbis have been, so too the cantors of Park Avenue Synagogue. Cantor David Lefkowitz served for over 30 years. And in 2011, cantor Ozzy Schwartz was brought in from Israel cementing the synagogue's status as a global hub for Jewish music. Ozzy takes cantorial leadership to a new level. Composition, execution, involving the community, bringing new musicians, bringing in traditions beyond Jewish traditions so that music speaks to everyone. We are the place that preserves the cantorial traditions and is in the process of writing the canon of Jewish music for the generations to come. We have the best cantor in the world. Do you have a favorite song? If you come to services today, you will hear old melodies, you will hear new melodies, you will hear ancient Hebrew, and you will also hear some songs in English. What's your favorite song to sing? Uh, probably any kind of Queen song. We want to engage with people. We want to connect their experience here at the synagogue to what's happening in their lives. We've enjoyed explosive growth over the last 10 years. We were bursting at the seams. We were literally renting space all over the neighborhood. The thriving, vibrant nature of our community was not being matched in the physical infrastructure. Our welcoming area was not welcoming or warm. Our entertaining space was dated. The building had not been renovated since 1981. That modernization was hailed by the New York Times as bringing classical dignity to Madison Avenue and an act of civic generosity. Steve Friedman was a start. He's the one who heard the message. I have surely seen the affliction of my people, and I have heard their cry. If Steve Friedman was Moses, bringing us right to the entry of Israel, Art Penn was Joshua. The chairman of the time, Steve Friedman, asked me as treasurer to chair a committee on our space needs. We were 12,000 square feet short of space. Something had to be done. The catalyst for the capital campaign came when this beautiful townhouse on 89th Street became available. Andy Bumlestek, or as we say, ABL, took us through the whole process of raising probably the greatest amount of money since the building of the original temple 2,000 years ago. We had participation from 97% of our member families. It was critical that the building reflect that same commitment to tradition and change. The Gottlieb windows have become a unifying aspect for our campus, and they've been the one steady factor through all the construction. Mazel tov, mazel tov. And now we could start phase two, which was renovating our 87th Street building. How do you maintain the feeling of community when you've lost your home? We journeyed together in the wilderness. We got everyone to a temporary location on 90th Street. We held a year of our early childhood center off-site. The staff had to all move out and all move back in, and it was incredibly challenging for them to keep doing their day-to-day -day work, but they did an amazing job. In the midst of the renovation project, we decided one way to help keep the community together is to take a trip to Israel and we brought 450 of our members in the largest congregation trip ever. It was really an extraordinary statement about our community, about our community's connection to Israel. 
In addition to Israel, the synagogue has recently journeyed to Berlin, Prague, Budapest, Cuba, Russia, and Lithuania, all part of repairing the world. What we've accomplished here is quite staggering. But these four walls are not what defines us. It's our commitment to our values, and our community, and to generations that follow. We're not having a few good years. This is who we are. This is our way to pay it forward to the next generation. What we really have done is create a space to grow for the future. I hope that we're sparking the next generation to engage Jewishly in their own way, and then in their time, they will take this and run with it. After beginning with fewer than 100 families, today the synagogue stands 1,740 families strong, with hundreds of committees involved in every aspect of Jewish life, building community here and abroad. Park Avenue Synagogue may be 137 years old, but its values remain unchanged. From its modest beginning to becoming a vibrant and influential community, Park Avenue Synagogue seeks to inspire, educate, and support its members to live passion-filled Jewish lives. We can always, as human beings, reinvent ourselves. The success of Park Avenue Synagogue is not about the physical architecture, it's about the spiritual architecture, a community that meets people where they are and shows and inspires people where they want to be. Oh.